Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Let's talk some mountain weather here, and it is wet across parts of the West. We've got our storm system here. A lot of moisture from what was Hurricane Priscilla continues to move through Utah and Colorado. There's also a storm system spinning off the West Coast, and so in between it, we're funneling moisture through a lot of the Intermountain West. Now, most of this is rain. Unless you're at the very highest of elevations, then you are seeing snow um, over the high peaks. Let me take you into Utah. Again, moisture from Priscilla right here. Um, all of this, that's a big slug of moisture moving out of Moab. Southeast Utah, western Colorado. Little bit of precept, maybe working its way through the high Uintas at this point. But again, the majority of this is going to be rain. Unless you're above 12, 13,000 feet, then you're probably going to be seeing some snow. Um, here's Colorado. You can see the radar view. So we've got moisture even down here in New Mexico coming out of Arizona. That is a big area of moisture right there. A lot of it is rain, but it is raining and snowing over parts of southwest Colorado. Let me take you into uh, some beautiful cameras here. So this is the, the live camera from the Telluride Regional uh, at the airport. Notice the tarmac is completely wet. You're looking off into the distance. No, normally you would be able to see uh, some of the very highest peaks of the San Juans, the Wilsons over there, El Diente in the distance. They're obscured. What we're likely seeing is snow um, above 13,000 feet in Colorado right now which includes a lot of the highest peaks in Colorado. So while it's rain at the lower elevations, it is snowing up there. I had to show you this. I mean, look at this. It's, it's all been rain in town. This is Telluride. This is the mountain village here. Um, it's been rain here. It's been rain down in, uh, off Main Street in Telluride. But I mean, it just jumps out to you, the color. It's just stunning, right? It's one of the prettiest places anywhere. Um, but the fall color is still peaking there over parts of southwest Colorado. All right, just had to show you that. Here are my bullet points this morning. So we've got number one, storm system number one. It's really a combination of a storm off the west coast and remnant uh, moisture from Priscilla coming through. Again, very high rain snow lines in Utah and Colorado, but they'll gradually be dropping today, this afternoon, tonight, and into uh, Sunday morning. The second storm system is approximately 1013 through 1016 for the west. Now that one will be a front plus moisture from Raymond, which is down in the Pacific right now. So we're going to pull in or siphon in moisture from another tropical system, just like what we're seeing happen right now. The third storm system is the coldest of the group. That's 1017, 18, 19. 19. That one will likely produce or generate snow at lower elevations because of how cool it's going to be. These are the best odds for snow, the dates over the highest peaks of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. Notice generally you've got three different storm systems right there. So I won't go through all of the dates. Let me take you to water vapor satellite imagery, lay of the land here. So dry air on this, this is in the mid-levels, is oranges, reds, and black colors, that's dry air. The moisture, where the action is, that's in the whites and the blues. And clearly, so you've got remnant moisture here from what was Priscilla. Then you've got this storm system. You can see the spin off the west coast, Pacific Northwest. Now, in the coming days, this low will begin to drag itself to the south, dig itself to the south, and intensify, bringing in a little bit cooler air. And it will start to impact California and the high Sierra. Uh, in the extended forecast. Let me show you the forecast radar. We'll play this out. So we'll start this today at uh, just before lunchtime, Saturday, October 11th. And what do you notice at this point? Again, this is the, what the, for, the, the radar should show in the future. This is all of the moisture that's moving through Utah, Colorado, and it's going to move into Wyoming at that point. And again, snow at the very highest of elevations. Then you've got the action up here in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Tier with our storm system. All right, moving ahead. There's lunch. So this is roughly the dinner hour. We've got a new band of precipitation running all the way down north to south, including Utah, um, over the Wasatch, 
You've got you've got rain, snow over parts of the uh, the Wind Rivers, the Tetons, and in southwest Montana. Again, very elevation dependent. And then you've got a heavy batch of precip in the Pacific Northwest at that point. All right, so this is the early morning hours, roughly 6 a.m. on Sunday. Most of the action at this point is in the northern tier. Everything else, there's a little bit of precip left over down here over the four corners, but drying up at that point, much drier. Here's lunchtime on Sunday. There's the, uh, the dinner hour on Sunday right there. Uh, here's the morning hours, uh, probably 6 a.m.-ish on Monday. Now we're starting to see some new moisture move in to the four corners from what is or what was Raymond out there in the Pacific at that point. And you've got the storm system digging to the south here into California at that point. So a couple of things in motion at this point. Here we are lunchtime on Monday the 13th. Um, and there is the early morning hours of Tuesday, October 14th. That's roughly 6 a.m. So you've got a little bit of moisture here. And then there's our storm system. It has moved all the way south into California. And look what it's doing. It's ramming that precip all the way up against the Sierra. I would expect this to be the peak moment, the peak day for snow in the Sierra. And I'll show you what I'm thinking for that coming up in a second. But you've got snow all the way up and down the Sierra at that point. Okay, let me go into in the middle of the atmosphere, look at pressure anomalies. This is effective today, the 11th. There's our area of low pressure. And again, you have all that moisture kind of working its way through the Rockies from Priscilla. Again, what you're looking at are areas of uh, pressure anomalies, so either higher or lower than where they should be for this time of the year. Now, at this point, by the 16th, our big area of low pressure is moving squarely through the Rockies, so cooler with some areas of snow at the higher elevations, Utah, the in basically all of the Intermountain West. Big area of low pressure off the, uh, the northeast coast at that point. All right, now, here's the final storm system. And this is a doozy. This is the coldest one. If this verifies, this would be the coldest one we've seen so far. And you can tell. I mean, this is really a big dip in the jet. Very much looking at lower than normal pressures. Probably two standard deviations below the norm. Um, this, If this were to verify, you'd look at colder temperatures and eff effectively forcing the rain snow line down to lower elevations. We would likely be seeing snow to a lot of uh, valley floors. If this were to verify, this is again 1018, third storm system of the bunch. Um, let me talk a little bit about southwest Colorado briefly. This is the time height forecast for Red Mountain Pass. So we're up there in the 11, 11,000 foot range. So we're still looking at rain over Red Mountain. But if you were to go above Red Mountain to some of the 13ers and the 14ers, you'd be seeing snow. So down here, current moment. In time, you read this in this direction into the future, and you're looking at a slice of the atmosphere at all levels. So the green is going to be your areas of higher relative humidity and likely precip, and we've got that right now, this afternoon, tonight, and into tomorrow morning, and then much drier after that with a dry slot, and then a little bit of new moisture comes in as we work our way into the 14th of October. So that's Red Mountain Pass. Precip continues today, tonight, tomorrow morning and then a little bit of a drier slot. Um, okay, let me show you the uh, the 10 day, or not the 10 day, this is the five day snow forecast. So this will effectively take us through the current storm and then the next storm, storm number two, that's lined up. Look what we've got. There's your big snow in the Sierra. I'll detail that in a second. You've got some snow in Colorado, maybe up to six inches over some of the highest of elevations, but uh, again, still having a little bit of difficulty resolving what's happening right now on some of the 13ers and the 14ers. So likely the numbers would be a little higher than what's shown here. You've got some snow for Utah. We'll zoom in on these numbers, but clearly well over six inches for Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Again, that's just the five day snow forecast. Let me zoom into, let me zoom into California. Talk a little bit about this. So here are the key statistics of the forecast. The timeline for the snow that you see right here, which is 6 to 12 inches plus, potentially near Mount Whitney, the southern end of the Sierra, uh, maybe 1 to 2 feet. 
on some of those uh, 13 and 14,000 foot aspects. The rain snow line in general will start at around 9 to 10,000 feet and then it's going to drop all the way down to 6 to 7,000 feet during the course of this event. Again, the peak timing will be the afternoon evening of the 13th, 13th well into the 14th, most of the 14th. So that's the timing for that. And look, even Nevada will see some snow on some of the higher elevations. Let me take you into Colorado. So this is the total precipitation forecast over the next five days. If everything fell as rain, this is what we would get. And look at the San Juans. Three, four, five inches of total moisture. Again, that is significant moisture for that area. Even up here in the parts of western, and most of this is in western Colorado, and especially I-70 South. But we're still, even in these areas, looking at one to three inches of moisture. So on the highest peaks, 13ers and 14ers, we're looking at big snow accumulation, heavy, wet snow accumulation up there. Here's what the, the thinking is from the 10 to 1 on this, the snow forecast. Again, in my opinion, it's underdone because it's having a hard time resolving the highest peaks. But nonetheless, you can see the snow forecast here indicating um, several inches of accumulation. Um, at low to mid levels, not going to see much. Uh, maybe with the third storm system and it being colder, we will. But this definitely sees some snow here over the next five days. Zooming into Wyoming, Montana, uh, Utah, Idaho, uh, these bright purples and pinks, that's 6 to 12 inches, if not more in some places. Yellowstone, Bighorns, Wind Rivers, Tetons, uh, up in the parts of Idaho, southwest Montana. And notice here in Utah, you've got maybe up to 6 inches of snow here for a lot of the Wasatch and the High Uintas in the forecast. Um, you're gonna, we're going to have to watch the rain snow line, the snow levels very carefully not only with the current storm, but the second storm, and then certainly the third storm might be the coldest one, and we'll see the, the rain snow line come down. But this is just a five-day snow forecast right here. Let's see if I got anything else. Nope, that is it. Let me go back to this. This, this is really the, the crux of the, the problem here that we're, we've been dealing with over the last 48 hours. It is really, you know, there's a lot of moisture with this. Um, Priscilla and then Raymond inbound. Um, the question is, what's your elevation? Because this is going to be very elevation dependent just because of how warm it is. It's early season. But again, if you can get yourself above tree line to 13 or 14, you're likely going to see snow out of this. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Oh, by the way, you may have heard La Nina is officially on the board. Um, we have officially moved into La Nina. That's completely as expected as I was forecasting for October, November, and even into early December, we'll probably maintain La Nina, which, you know, what we're seeing now with this type of pattern, let me take you back to the 10-day or the five-day snow forecast. This would really mirror what you would expect in a La Nina pattern, which is what we're seeing right here with that active storm track kind of coming out of the, the Pacific Northwest and then down into the, uh, the Inner Mountains. So this, this will set us up for the rest of the winter and then we'll probably go into a neutral phase, probably January, February, and then maybe into a, uh, a light El Nino, believe it or not, by next spring. All right, guys, we'll, I'll probably do a little bit more with that in another video, but I just wanted to bring you that update. Take care. Have a great day. Appreciate you tuning in here, and I'll talk with you later.